I'm a, I work here at Mary Chapman House and we are part of CAMS, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Care Service. And what we do is offering um, assessments and treatment to children and young people and their families who have been referred to us usually by a GP or by a school. We are a therapeutic team. So, so that means that our aim is for young people to participate in, in therapeutic activities that will help them resolve or overcome the emotional uh, difficulties that they face. Before the assessment happens, we do a, a telephone triage, which is a discussion with the parent. And in that triage, the assessor will kind of say, is there a reason why you can't come in? So some people like to come into a clinic, some people prefer it to be at home, some people prefer a video call, but it's something that we, we would ask. Before they even get here, they will have been sent some questionnaires and a description of what happens. It allows us to get a sense of the things that the young people might be struggling with. Um, in terms of the assessments, it's for the young person, but we would be very clear with the parent about what's happening and that they had a space after the assessment to call in if they'd like to. For about an hour or so, we'll talk about what's been happening in the young people's lives and the family's life and what has brought them to our door, um, whether that be difficult behaviour that maybe the school or the young person has been feeling particularly anxious or low in mood and hopefully that will offer a space where they can talk about that and we'll try and do as much of it as we can in the most comfortable way for them possible so that might include both parents, it might include one parent. We usually try to privilege some time for the young person on their own as well, assuming that they're comfortable with that. But we try to make it as flexible and comfortable as possible for them. We work in multidisciplinary teams, which means that we have um, several different professions um, represented in each of our groups um, that meet to discuss next steps for, for individuals who, who use our service brings a really rich mix of, of skills and, and lots and lots of experience. These, these are people who have been helping young people um, for a long, long time. I think probably the first thing to mention that patient choice is really important. So if we perhaps come up with the idea that a group might be the best way forward for a young person, if they really don't want to be part of it, all they've got to do is let us know and we'll try and something that fits for them better. Generally young people come onto a stage one intervention and that's very much about psychoeducation and understanding how, how their feeling could be impacting on their body. So for example, if a young person comes in anxious, we'd be learning first about anxiety and setting like a goal about what they wanted to achieve from our six sessions. Now we understand what anxiety is, now we've got some strategies, now we've got some goals identified, how are we going to reach those? And some young people say, do you know what, that's enough, I can go to school, I can use the strategies and that's fine. Other young pe people will say, perhaps I need a bit, I want to talk to another therapist. Or perhaps you'd like some occupational therapy um, to establish what is meaningful to you. Or perhaps you need more play therapy or art therapy. Or maybe just someone to help coordinate things for you. So every single step of the treatment, young people are involved in what's, what's happening next. Hopefully our aims, if things go really well, would be to discharge and allow the family and the individual to put in practice some of the strategies they've learned. You would work towards an ending with your clinician, so it won't come out of the blue. Um, you'll be talking about it way in advance of that last session happening. But that doesn't mean to say that the, the patient's journey, the young person's journey, will end at that point, because if they still need more help after that point, we wouldn't just stop. We would be looking at really good signposting to other services with the understanding that if their needs change again, they can go back to their GP and we refer. But we would try and really advocate that they utilise the, the signposting that we're using, the strategies we've put in. They've got all the literature, all the, all the resources we've already given to, to look back on. It's, it's important for the young people to know that when they come here, they will be looked after, they will be cared for. Uh, the people who work here and support them have their, their best interest as heart. But for, for improvements, um, people need to make changes and that can be sometimes difficult, but our role is, is to, to support them through those difficult uh, changes that, that need to be made and to, to 
give them hope that it is possible, to give them tools to enable them to, to get there. And you know, we will work with, with their families so that we can support the parents, carers, sometimes schools and other professionals in understanding what might be going on so that they will be better equipped to also give support to the young person in the way that they need to and want to receive it.